Welcome back to the Major Mitch YouTube channel. Today's episode, we're checking out my friend Don's 63 split window, and we're gonna answer one of my most popular questions, which is how do I examine a bird cage or a project car to make sure it's worth buying and just make sure that you know we can tackle it. So I'm gonna answer some of those questions. We're also gonna look at a convertible bird cage to help demo what to look at. Um, so we've got a lot to do, so stick around. In my opinion, the best way to diagnose a project car and check on its health is first to know what the bird cage looks like. So that way you can help, it'll help you pinpoint where you're looking to see problem areas. And this is a 65 convertible bird cage. It doesn't have any fiberglass on it. So this is a perfect candidate to kind of give you guys some ideas of where to look. And even before you get into the bird cage, just get an idea of the car's history. Where is it from? Where did it spend most of its life? How long has it been off the road? And also you're gonna to wanna to look at the chassis to see its condition. Um, if the car is closer to the ocean for most of its life, they typically rust from like the top down, the top half. And then if you have a car that's spent its life near the salt, as in like salt on the roads in the snow, they typically rust from the bottom up. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but you can see we have a nice candidate here. A lot of times the bird cages will rust across the windshield area here. Um, this one's really clean. If you have the windshield out, you can get good access to this, but the firewall will cover this portion um, and your dash frame will cover back in here and so will a lot of your trim. Now for a convertible, all this stuff is reproduced, so that really doesn't matter. If some of this is rusted out, it's obviously some labor, but uh, they make all this stuff. Then a lot of times where they rust out, if you have a car from uh, the salt areas, the rockers rot out. And if the rockers don't, a lot of times the joint between the rocker and the hinge pillar or the rocker and the latch pillar rust out. You can see this one is really nice. They overlap here, they overlap in this joint and they overlap here. So anytime you have metal overlapping, you have a possibility for rust. And if your rocker rots out, there's gonna be a lot of work to fix that, um, but at least all that stuff is reproduced. Uh, for coupes, they don't reproduce any of the roof structure. So if that's all rotted out, if your car is from, you know, uh, by the ocean, you're gonna be in either finding nice used pieces or you're gonna have to start hand making stuff, which I do a lot of times. So this is the birdcage. Pretty much the only thing you can see when the whole car is together is the Z-bar. And you can get a little bit of access to this joint in here. And if you take the kick panels out, you can get a little bit of access to in here and you know you really don't get a whole lot when the doors are open you can kind of get a little peek in here but you're gonna have to be creative maybe bring yourself a little bore scope or something so that way you can try to figure out you know what's what's the overall health of the of the car i apologize again this is one of those videos where i lost the audio so i'm having to fill in the audio after the fact um, but the main things you need to know here is this is a white 63 split window. My friend Don owns it and he has a YouTube channel. So check out his YouTube channel if you want to see more about him or his 63 split window. So here's Don's 63 Corvette. He started to take it apart. It was a complete car whenever he started. And you can see it's had some modifications over the years. Uh, if we go down to the parking light panels, you can see it's missing the actual parking light itself. And then he has some blue tape marked out here for where the front end was spliced on at one point and he removed the inner fenders and you can see that it had some flared fenders in it at one point. So this front end's really not uh, very good to him right now. So if we jump to the inside, we can see very quick, this is the worst, one of the worst parts of the bird cage right here in the B pillar where the roof connects down there. There's a big old hole there where there should be a gutter. So that's definitely one of the problem areas that you see on coupes, as well as the whole top of the gutter surround here. But on this car, that actual top part looks pretty nice. Uh, the worst is in the gutter, which they do reproduce that, but you can see there's some holes here, so there's definitely gonna be some repair work. Now to fix this, we're probably gonna have to remove the quarter panel. This one has a flare in it, so it's okay to remove that quarter panel. Um, it's not gonna hurt anything. So you have to remove the B pillar uh, fiberglass cover as well to get access to that. And you'd also have to remove the gutter. Now going to the front, you can see We've got some gutter issues, but they reproduce that as well. So that's really not a big deal. The structural stuff underneath it is actually in pretty good shape. The nice thing is the inside of the roof structure looks really clean because this is a Ohio car and doesn't have any rust up in the top of the roof. Everything still has original white paint. There's a little bit of surface rust and maybe a couple little pinholes in the windshield, the top windshield cross member. But overall, it's nothing really to be concerned with. That's just something you can clean up and rust treat 
Now the windshield channel itself looks nice. Uh, this front end will end up coming off. So once he takes the front end off, that's when you can really see the health of the windshield frame. The windshield frame looks good. Um, it is pitted in some areas, so he may find a little bit of rust whenever he pulls the front end off. But you can see in here, you get a nice view to the top cap of the hinge pillar. You can see it's got some surface rust, but again, I would just recommend rust treating this. Um, I don't think there's anything too alarming in here. I've replaced those in the past, which that is a lot of work, um, but this one looks pretty nice overall. Now if we jump below the car, we can take a look at the rocker. You can see this rocker is really rusty. I'll show you the chassis later, which would give you indications that the rocker is going to be rusty. But it's just in really rough shape. So this car is from Ohio, so you kind of expect a little bit of rust down below, but this one's pretty excessive. We're definitely going to have to replace uh, the rockers in this car. The, you might be able to sleeve them in some cases, but this one's just too far gone. So what I would recommend doing is removing the front end, the quarter panel, and all the fiberglass in the door jam, like the B pillar, the A pillar, and also the fiberglass rocker. And you're gonna wanna put some reinforcements to go between the A pillar and the B pillar to tie those two together. And then you're probably gonna wanna do that on both sides of the car and kind of make like an H frame that connects in there um, because you're gonna end up cutting off both of your rockers and you wanna keep your birdcage square. That's how I'd recommend fixing this. Um, you just get the best access. Now inside, you can see a little bit between the floor tub and the fiberglass rocker. You can get a little bit of an indication of your health back there. Um, but again, you don't really get a great view, but looking underneath, you can tell that, well, she's gonna need some work. We'll just keep rolling. I don't know what I'm saying. Yada, yada, yada. Still talking. I think we said all I needed to say. Talking about this. Talking about the roof seam. All right, now if we move to the back of the car, in terms of fiberglass, this car looks actually really nice in the, the back part. The rear quarter panels have obviously been flared. Now if we walk back over to the driver's side, it's a lot more of the same situation. You can see a little bit of the gutters, has some surface rust, a little bit of holes, but the actual A pillar itself looks pretty solid. In the inside, we have more surface rust where all the pieces overlap of the windshield frame. It's another area just to keep an eye on. Um, but if, if, you, if your car has a dash in it, you could crawl underneath the dash. You can get a little bit of a per, uh, perspective there. It's just a lot easier to do without the dash. If we look down here, uh, you can see a little bit of the joint of the hinge pillar to the rocker. You can see surface rust down there, but the actual uh, hinge pillar itself looks pretty solid. It's um, definitely salvageable. I think the car just needs rockers and we can get away with not having to really patch on the uh, hinge pillars, which is good. But with the front end exposed, you'll be able to see a lot more and there may be some things that show up later. Now this side is a little worse than the uh, passenger side. So you saw on overkill, I did a patch similar to this, but we can see in here that She's, she's rough, she's rough in this area. So this is definitely gonna mean you need to remove the quarter panel, you're gonna have to remove the B pillar, and you're gonna have to pull a gutter off to get access to this. You're gonna have to do a, a lot of hand fabbing. They don't make uh, the piece that's damaged underneath. They make the gutter and they make the drip rail, but they don't make the stuff that's damaged underneath. So that stuff's gonna need to be handmade or you need to find some used parts, which it's not impossible to do. And at worst case scenario, you may have to start to peel up on the uh, rear tub a little bit just to get access uh, in there because your bonding strips might not be attached to anything anymore. It's definitely a structural point in the car that you want to have in good shape. Now if we curl down here and look at the rocker on the driver's side, you see a lot of rust and you can see back here, well, we're missing uh, a chunk of the rocker. So this car 100% needs rockers. There's no no way around that. Once that's done, you know, that that's basically your foundation of your car. So you want to make sure that's done, that's done right. So. The car really has just a couple problem areas. It's not horrible, um, but it's definitely not perfect. You can see it's got some holes in the floor here and someone cut the tunnel back here to service a U-joint probably back in the day. But overall, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty clean car. The roof skin is in really nice shape. The whole roof structure on this side looks great as well. So I don't think he'll have two, um, too much issue really fixing this car. It'll just take some time to take it apart and put it back together. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. If we look in here, you can see it's all globbed up here in the quarter panel area just from, from previous repairs. If 
from whatever it had flares on it's just really really thick back here so the car will lose a little bit of weight once you put some better quarter panels on it so this is a good candidate for a new front end and new quarter panels personally what i would do is i'd cut the front end off right by the wiper grill and then I would use an air hammer and carefully chisel away the rest of the front end because the front end is not usable. So carefully remove it to protect your firewall. Um, then you'll have access to get the A-pillar off to pull that. And then you'll get access to be able to start to do your repair work to, to fix the birdcage. Now let's take a look at the chassis from the split window. You can take a look at the core support. And well, it's missing a lot. It's missing the mount, the entire cross member, and the mount on the other side. I mean, there's... A lot of weight reduction going on here it's just it's not a good start now the chassis uh it's it's bad okay there should be metal in all of these areas where you can see through daylight and this cross member should have a bottom on it you shouldn't just be able to reach your hand up in there or bend it like it's paper clip uh, this cross member over here is completely missing and there is nothing attaching the main part of the frame kick up to the frame the brake line and the emergency brake cable are part of the structural integrity to this vehicle currently. I can just bend the frame just by leaning on it. I think if you jumped on it, you'd probably snap it in half. I mean, the more you look, the worse it gets. And the back cross member is even really thin, which is kind of wild. Moving forward, it's just more of the same. The rear end looks good. Half shafts seem okay-ish. But look at this. There's just... There's nothing here. There's multiple layers of steel that should be layered up here, and they're all just, they're just gone, missing. This is probably one of the worst frames that I've ever seen. It's just, there's not much here. You can fix some frames, you can rest repair them, but this one's, this one's not good for anything like that. You can see up front, though, whenever stuff was caked in with oil, nope. If you see up here, the battery tray is it's just gone. This does have a, not the original 327, but a 327, and it has a four speed behind it so that that's a little bit of value here and the front suspension some of the bumper brackets and stuff that's in okay shape the engine leaked oil so that's good it actually helped preserve what you know the, the front part of the chassis so that that's fine back part of the chassis not so much so personally you could probably just cut the frame off and just scrap the back half and sell off some of those parts but she's just she's gone it's it's really remarkable it didn't damage the body at all there was no cracks in it um, and if you start to see something like this in your frame your bird cage is probably compromised in your rockers so if you're not looking for a huge in-depth project you might want to run away if you see something like this this is this is what you call a bad situation yeah although he did make a run Hope, and I think he made, he made it move a little bit, which I'm surprised it didn't break the body. But that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope that helps some people out there looking at project cars. Again, I'm not a Corvette expert in this area, um, but I've done a lot of rust repair, and I know what to look for, and I hope that uh, you'd also do your research when you're looking at a car. You don't just rely on one thing. You gotta make sure you check all your areas, be safe, be thorough when you look at it, and don't just look at one picture and buy it and you know be too disappointed in it. But definitely do your homework and you should hopefully end up with a pretty good car in the end of it. So I got a lot of work to do and I'll catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.